You're in the gate. And they're off. Kiss by Fire broke alertly. So did Mystify Doll. Those two were very quick in the opening stages, and Spicy Bug comes away in between them, pressing Kissed by Fire onto the main course. So it's Kissed by Fire, who's quickest. Spicy Bug now three quarters back second. It's a gap of three. Irresistible Force moves up inside of Mystify Doll. They're followed by Tiff with Jimmy on the inside of Dancing Mo. Irish Rose is next. Eight lengths off the lead. Four clear of Chrome. Dessert. And Northeast Star at the back of the field, kissed by fire into the far turn, a length and a half in front of Spicy Bug in second. Irresistible Force keeping pace to off them in third. Then Mystify Doll in between rivals. Dancing Mo in the white launching a little bit of a bid. Just behind her, Irish Rose is next. And Northeast Star starts to roll from behind. They're at the top of the stretch. And it's kissed by Fire and Spicy Bug nose to nose. Center of the course, Northeast Star continues to make some headway. But it is Spicy Bug past the 16th pole. And now putting away Kissed by Fire late. Spicy Bug and Kentis Ormo by a length and a quarter. Kissed by Fire was second. Northeast Star, Irresistible Force, and Irish Road. We're in the gate. And they're off. Set the Cento's yellow blinkers straight to the front. Tembo, wrong spot. They line up. Three right across the track into the first turn. And it is the long shot. Wrong spot. Who takes a very narrow lead? Tembo is about a half length back in second. And set the Cento three wide with just a length and a half to make up. Six furlongs to run. Wrong spot leads by a half now to Tembo. And now it's two more. Set the Cento content to track the top pair. Heading to the 5 8 pole, Tembo and Abdul Al Sagur on even terms with wrong spot and Giovanni Franco. Two more, Tiago Pereira and Set the Cento. As they head to the half mile pole, wrong spot, Tembo continue on even terms. Wrong spot being worked upon now as Tembo gets the lead away from him pretty easily. Two and a half more, Set the Cento coming to the 3 8 Tembo puts away wrong spot. And now Set the Cento takes up the chase into second. Tembo has a three length lead coming toward the quarter pole. Set the Cento fully extended, closing the gap slowly though. He's within a length and a half as the field gets close to the top of the stretch. Tembo digging in. Set the Cento in hot pursuit. Seven back to wrong spot, three sixteenths to run. And Tembo has a two length lead. Set to Cento. Still trying hard on the outside, just switch leads and now trying to get to Tembo, but Tembo has another gear. Set to Cento, a length and a half behind. Tembo, set to Cento, a final try. Set to Cento's coming now, and set to Cento needed every yard of the stretch to get to Tembo. Wrong spot third. Spite and Malice coming up. And they're off. Spite and Malice gets the first call. Manitouish, Cyber Viking in between rivals, followed by Neptune, Storm, and Bilotti. So Manitouish ends up quicker than all and leads three quarters of a length, Cyber Viking in second. Then Neptune, Storm, Spite and Malice on the far side is two off the lead, and a length and a half to Bilotti. Less than a half mile to run. And Manitouish, almost a length now to Cyber Viking. And now it's a length and a half as he speeds toward the 3 8 pole. Bilotti following that rail run in third. Followed by Spite and Malice. Neptune Storm fifth and last coming to the quarter pole. Manitouish 
Cyber Viking comes after him in second. Two more to Bilotti in third. Then Spite and Malice, they're at the top of the stretch. Manitouish and Cyber Viking head-to-head -head now. Cyber Viking on the outside and a game. Manitouish matching strides with him the whole way. Manitouish, in fact, maintaining the lead. It's Manitouish a half to Cyber Viking on the outside who gives him another shot. It's Manitouish, Cyber Viking. These two come for the wire together. Manitouish. Turns away Cyber Viking. Bilotti was third. In the gate. And they're off. Very even start. Johnny Padres began well from the inside, as did Leia's Candy, flashing good speed. Six feet, one from the outside, and Trump, four virtually across the course. Then Chicks Dig It and Irish Heat Wave is at the back of the field. Leia's Candy emerges with the lead down the back stretch, a half length to six feet in second. It's two more to Trump on the outside of Johnny Padres. They're followed by Chicks Dig It, who's four lengths off the lead. An Irish heat wave continues at the back. Leia's Candy about a half length in front of six feet. Johnny Padres third, trumped on the outside fourth. Then Chicks Dig It, still four off the lead, joined at the rail by Irish heat wave. Approaching the quarter pole and six feet now puts his neck in front. At the rail, Leia's Candy is losing ground steadily, steadying and pretty much dropping right out of it. Leia's Candy might be being pulled up as the field turns for home. And it wasn't smooth for Johnny Padres in the process. In the meantime, six feet, scampers two lengths clear with an eighth to run. Here comes Irish Heat Wave from last. And in between, it's trumped. Irish Heat Wave, trumped. These are the two coming for the wire together. Irish Heat Wave, trumped. Trumped Irish Heat Wave. Irish Heat Wave or trumped. Here's the line. Irish Heat Wave prevails. Trumped was second. Then it was Johnny Padres, a distant third in front of six feet. Stimo walks in. And they're off. Mitzi's Express rockets out. So does Refocus, and they hook up immediately, speeding into the far turn. Full throttle. Refocus, narrow advantage. Mitzi's Express up alongside. Last Call London joins the party with a bold three-wide bid, and Last Call London is the new leader. Thirsty Gambler, 4-3 off the pace. Another two back to Love That Money, who's three in front of Mr. Dream Cycle, and Thirsty Mo at the back of the field. A quarter of a mile to go. Last Call London doing battle with Refocus. Two more back to Mitzi's Express in third. They're at the top of the stretch. Last Call London, but a very tough Refocus is extremely professional, turns him away, and opens up. Refocus in a sparkling debut, just eating up the ground and pulling clear to win it by four widening lengths. Refocus, jogs home. Last call, London, Mitzi's Express. Love that money and Mr. Dream Cycle. Include coming up in the gate, and they're off in the desert code. Conclude is out fastest. Acquired class, ransomware on the outside comes away in third. Then it's Mas Rapido. First piece in the red colors moves all the way up to take second, and at the back of the field is Valiancer. Down the hill, and Conclude sets the pace. The favorite first piece keeps close in second, just about a length and a half off the leader. Then Mas Rapido in third, followed by Acquired Class, three off the pace, Valiancer and Ransomware. They're heading toward the quarter pole, chasing Conclude, 
who's in front of length. First piece is in second. It's now three lengths back to Mas Rapido in third and Valiancer at the rail, followed by Acquired Class and Ransomware a quarter of a mile to go. And Conclude is asked the question as first piece comes to him in second. These two square off at the eighth pole. Conclude on the inside and first piece are head and head. Conclude a neck. First piece on the outside. Three more to Ransomware in third. Conclude and first piece head to head. Nose to nose, they come to the wire. It's going to be too close to call. What a race in the desert code. Conclude and first piece, inseparable. Speeding style to the outside. And they're off, speeding style, a little slow out of the gate. Mike Operator is fast, so is Next Revolt, those two early on, with Papali just behind them, speeding style. Happy Happy is down at the rail, about three off the early tempo, and next to him is Claim of Passion. Compact group rounds the first turn, with Mike Operator showing the way by a length. Next, Revolt, keeping close in second. And at the rail, Happy Happy, a joint third, racing on the inside of his stablemate, Speeding Style. Papale is in between those two, a little crowded, but only three lengths off the lead, and a length back to Claim of Passion. Five-eighths to run, Mike Operator narrowly. Next, Revolt pressing, two more lengths. Back to Speeding Style in third, Papale between, and Happy Happy at the rail, Claim of Passion continues to trail with less than a half mile to go. They're covered by six now as Mike Operator and Next Revolt start to sprint away. Papale is clearly third and trying to come after the top pair. Mike Operator, Next Revolt, Papale four lengths back in third, then Speeding Style in fourth, followed at the rail by Claim of Passion. Happy Happy is a distant last. Past the quarter pole and turning for home. Mike Operator and Next Revolt Nose to nose, neither giving an inch. And Mike Operator has something left on the inside. Next Revolt fully extended, but now a length behind. And Papali is in third, a 16th to run. Mike Operator, Next Revolt, a length and a half behind, but still grinding away on the outside. Mike Operator proves best. Turning away, Next Revolt. Papali was third, claim of passion, finished fourth. They're all in line. And they're off in a very tardy beginning for With Love. The rest of them come out smoothly, including Stressed, who flies through on the inside to battle it out with Doris May through the opening furlong. Dazzling Dominica is in third, followed at the rail by Haley Levade, who's three lengths off the leaders. Then comes Crimson Rose, New Pi Lambda, and three more to With Love. They have a half mile to go, and it's Stressed in front. Prompted by Doris May, a half length behind second. Haley Levade, an eager third. Dazzling Dominica is in fourth. Followed by Crimson Rose, four lengths off the lead. Three clear of New Pi Lambda and With Love. Midway on the far turn, it's stressed. A neck to Doris May. Haley Levade on the inside, trying to get out of there. From the back of the field, New Pi Lambda is getting into contention, hugging the rail as Stressed comes to the eighth pole with a two-length lead. New Pi Lambda coming smartly at the rail and becoming a threat. It's uh, 16th to go. Haley Levade is outside of them. It's Stressed, New Pi Lambda, Haley Levade, late run from Crimson Rose. It's going to be Stressed, another for Juan Hernandez. Haley Levade second, Crimson Rose third, New Pi Lambda didn't quicken late, and then with love.
Normally our seminar guest is on cloud nine, but today I can almost guarantee you that he's on cloud 18. <laughs> Why is that? Because the um, uh, racing partnership that he discovered many, many moons ago won four stake races over the weekend, two at Pimlico, then he crossed the coast, came back to the West Coast, and won two right here at Sania. What a weekend for Little Red Feather. The uh, founder and the managing partner, Billy Couch, is my seminar guest today. Billy, happy Friday. Welcome to the seminar. Happy Friday. Always good to be here. Always good to see you, Tommy, and thank you for wearing a good shirt this time. <laughs> you, you, last time, I think you let me down, but this is, this is a nice one. I would never let you down you're because getting, you never getting, let me down. You're getting ready for Delmar, aren't you? I've got, I sure am. I've got a lot of important questions to ask you, Billy. The most important one is, after your success at Pimlico on Preakness Stakes Day, did you go to the Bruno Mars concert? We did not. You did not? We did not. Did you not have the cabana that Qatar, that no, Qatar Racing no, had? We, we're too old, probably, for <laughs> Bruno Mars. We had a very nice dinner. I can very, only imagine. We had, we had a fun dinner, a uh, bunch of... Uh, bunch of partners bill strauss went out with us and travis cromwell and obviously gary went and uh brett jones who owns a piece of conclude and bread conclude uh and and a special guest cal ripkin jr so wow. we were very fortunate very blessed what uh, fancy restaurant did you go to uh, someplace downtown baltimore i don't uh -huh. even remember the name we went there last year too we had a private room it was really really nice <laughs> well cal ripkin was in attendance at the pimlico let's take yeah. a look at some of the uh, results from the uh, preakness day of course as i mentioned you won two steak races let's kick it off with the stretch run of beer can man who won and paid nine dollars it is then right off the turn in front the leader by three quarters of a length nothing better is second beer can man is third try to come and get them into the final furlong, nothing better in front. Beer Can Man on the outside runs at him. Nothing better inside. Here comes Beer Can Man. And he gets out to win the Jim McKay. Billy, that was the Jim McKay turf sprint. You were third turning into the lane. Did you have high hopes that he would actually finish the way he did? Uh, yeah, we did. You could see us celebrating right there. Um, Imagine that. You know, it's funny because Larry Colmas is a good friend of ours and we had dinner with him the night before and he, and he had given Beer Can Man a big call at Del Mar when he won I remember. that fall. And he said, wait till you see this one if you guys are close. So it was really cool. He gave him the deep Beer Can Man, which was awesome. And, uh, and, and then he goes, go celebrate guys. It was, it was, it's pretty cool. It was, it was a great day. And the partners in Beer Can Man are super patient. And they've been so supportive. Obviously, he was injured and, and took, a, I think it was 14 months off. So um, credit to them for being really, really patient. And hopefully, he'll come down to Del Mar and do some damage down there. I, I just want to visit that thought for a minute, Billy, because let's face it, all the hard work you do trying to find these horses and get, get them into the win winner circle, it all circles back to the partners, right? Without the partners, you couldn't do what you do. Absolutely. You hit it right on the head. You said it for me. I mean, we say it all the time. If there's no partners, there's no Little Red family, you know? And it's true. Uh, we have some of the best partners. In fact, I think we have the best partners out there. They're really patient. They, they're they really supportive. And they love the animals, Tom. And that's kind of us. That's our MO, you know, put the animal first. So now that was the 10th race on Preakness Stakes Day. The 12th race, the race before the Preakness was actually the James Murphy Stakes horse by the name of Nagarak, you also owned. And take a look at Nagarak hitting the winner's circle in race number 12. Fantastic again. Back running in second on the inside. Nagarak opens up by two. Fantastic again, still second, then Kingfish Stevens, encircling the train, but it's all Nagarok. Nagarok and Flavia Pratt running up the score in the James W. Murphy. They're going to win it by four and a half lengths in the end. Billy Nagarok won by open lengths, paid four dollars. I have a feeling you were expecting him to turn in that type of performance. Yeah, he, you know, credit to Graham Motion and his team. Uh, went to the blinkers. There's Graham right there. Uh, went to the blinkers, and I think it really helped him focus. And an amazing ride by Flavian Pratt. You didn't see the beginning of that race, but he really tucked him in, saved ground. He set the track record, and he's a he's a really nice three year old. He'll run next in the Manila, I believe, uh, July seventh at Belmont. So great two two fifty. And our partners in that. Bill Strauss and, and Madiket, again, great people to work with and our partners. And it, that was an East Coast fund that we did. So that's why he's uh, back East. Speaking of the West Coast, you had another stakes winner here on the uh, card on Preakness Day at San Anita. It was a runner by the name of Elm Drive. I know that she's close to your heart. <laughs> and you tried her on the turf. You tried to get her on the turf the race before she actually, she actually wound up winning on the main track. This was her turf debut. But let's take a look at Elm Drive winning the Misdirection Stakes and paying $13.40 to and win. Big 
Summer and Elm Drive. Elm Drive goes on very willingly. Big Summer starts to chase in second and Honey Pants on the far outside. But it's Elm Drive very strong past the 16th pole. A three-length lead over Honey Pants. And it's going to be Elm Drive, a decisive winner of the Mid's Direction. Billy, these look like instant replays of each other, right? All on the turf, all winning by open lengths. And Elm Drive, the biggest price of the four winners, like I said, paying six dollars and change. Me, how did she go off that higher price? I, have I don't no idea. know. But... You know, she's she has a little bit of turf pedigree um, by Mohamed, which who is by Tappet, uh, and and sometimes those runners run on the grass. We we wanted to try on the grass because we didn't really have a lot of options, Tom, as you know. So. This kind of wound up being the perfect spot, and she ran her career best race. I mean, she ran the best buyer she's ever run. She ran, a, I think, a four and a half on third draft that day. So what it does is it just opens up some options for her as we continue with her all-important four-year-old campaign. And as if Saturday wasn't enough, Billy, for Little Red Feather, on Sunday you read Conclude in the Desert Code Stakes. That went off as race number six here at the race place on Sunday. Paid $5.40 to uh, win. Let's watch the stretch run for Conclude winning the Desert Code. First piece are head and head, conclude a neck. First piece on the outside, three more to ransom wear in third. Conclude and first piece, head to head, nose to nose. They come to the wire, it's going to be too close to call. What a Tough to beat Mike Smith as they crossed the wire, but that's exactly what you did. Now, the little red feather silks weren't on Conclude. No. How does that kind of all work out? Are you a minority partner? No, no actually, uh, there's three. There's a third, a third, a third on Conclude. It's Brett Jones, Airdrie Stud, who bred the horse, uh, us, and Mattiket. So we just rotate the silks. Our, you know, We just keep an eye on whose turn it is. And uh, thankfully, we got the job done. Great ride by J.J. Hernandez. Great job by Phil D'Amato and his team. You know, he got a little sick on us. Um, uh, not uh, we didn't know he was sick it's one of those things where he ran a kind of dull race last time we had high hopes for him and turned it around this time so mark Lat was not happy you got one uh, one runner on today's card billy good booju you also are running gold phoenix on memorial day as well any other runners that you have between yeah, now and have, then? yeah we have a good booju today and then tomorrow benedict canyon comes That's back right. on the first day right. uh two other than and then atomic drop runs in a calbred optional claiming race on sunday and then gold phoenix and balnikov run in the shoemaker mile so exciting weekend for lrf and all the partners not only is it an exciting weekend it's always going to be a fun weekend when, whenever you team up with little red feather you can find billy Koch on twitter bklrf is his twitter address get in touch with him if you want to get involved in all the excitement speaking of excitement there's very few scratches so let's toss the microphone over to track track announcer frank miramati and get those early changes on today's card here at the great race place Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Santa Anita Park. The track is fast. The turf is firm. The rail on the turf at 30 feet. Here are the early changes. In the first race, start of the 50 cent early pick five. Number seven, Princess Magic, carries one pound over. In race two, scratch number five, Tiergarten. Number five, Tiergarten is scratched, and with the morning line favorite out, John White has issued a revised morning line. There's no show wagering in race two. Race three starts the rainbow pick six. $201,000 in the jackpot carryover. Scratch number one, Austonian. Number one, Austonian is out. Three, Dazzle Me Silver, two pounds over. In the fourth, no changes. Race five, scratch number six, quick buck. In the fifth, scratch number six. In the sixth, scratch number nine, bodacious. Race six, take out the nine. Seven starts the golden hour, pick four. Number 10, just is, carries three pounds over. And in the eighth race, just the one blinker note. Golden Hour Double starts with the eighth. Enjoy your day at Santa Anita Park. Post time at the Great Race Place in 58 minutes at 1 p.m. 
this time, we go back to Quigley's Corner. Tom's special guest today is the founder and managing partner of Little Red Feather, Billy Koch. Welcome back. We're talking horses with Billy Koch. He's the head honcho at Little Red Feather. Is that fair to say with Gary Fenton as part of the mix as well? Like, really, who is the head honcho? Come on, bro. <laughs> I don't even have to go to my glasses for that. But you don't have to go to your glasses to handicap either. The last I do. Time, no, I have to. No, the last time I had you on was October 9th. I actually looked it up. And not only do you run a successful racing partnership, but you're an extremely sharp handicapper. I had some friends text me and say, who is this dude? They hadn't even heard of you before, and they wanted you back on. No. Can you imagine how quickly we bring back the bad handicappers if I haven't had you back since October it's 9th? It's really scary because I, I dominated that day, but that was all. I think it was lucky. And, I, and by the way, I might be a good handicapper, but I'm a terrible better. So maybe you could help me A lot that. of people say that. And how do you kind of adjust to that? In other words, you know, you don't want to go up to the window and just throw your money away. How do you kind of teach yourself or how do you learn from others in terms? of becoming a, a better better i think pay attention to, to people who do well for and, sure and ask them questions and and get to know different theories and you ultimately have to do what work what works for you you know on preakness day i wasn't even like paying attention and we hit like everything late pick five late pick four. i could have had it so many times and sure. i was like one day i don't pay attention i actually could have done well but uh no it's you know stay within your means but really, the way you got introduced to the game was being a handicapper, right? Absolutely. Your grandfather was a very successful executive at Hollywood Park across town. You fell in love with the horses, but then the handicapping came next. Before the ownership, it's the uh, it's the world's greatest jigsaw puzzle. It, you said it right. Every race is a, is a puzzle, and that's what's intriguing. Uh, I'm a kind of try to play value. You know, I, I went on here two times ago, and I went all long shots, and I was terrible. And then the last time. I think we kind of narrowed the road. it down, yeah. and, and and unfortunately, the card today is a little seems a little chalky. But listen, uh, stay within your means. I, but I try to hit the big one. Like of I course. like playing pick fives, pick fours. I, I don't usually just bet like a win bet. We're not here to trade dollars, no, right? You want to hit no. one out of the park, exactly. And especially if a horse is, you know of the favorite there's no point in that. and a but, lot of times we've seen though say if we're playing a pick six there could be two favorites in the sequence and it still pays well it's finding those other four hidden nuggets that really is the challenge yeah or betting again uh, i think the somebody told me this that uh, a good handicapper friend of mine said the first leg of a pick three or pick four or pick five if you have a feeling against the favorite just don't use it correct you know don't if you're going two or three deep throw that horse out and try to get that price early and most players, a lot of people Yes. A lot of people want to stay alive. You, know, you have to go totally against that theory. And that's, you know, I don't know, Tom, I, I'm terrible. <laughs> no, you're not. Yeah, I'm terrible. It's on tape, October 9th. You had a stellar day, <laughs> and we're happy to have All you right, back. Well, let's do it again. Yeah, let's absolutely. Get let's think positively. Yeah. Like I said, you're on cloud 18, so we yeah. want to take advantage of that. We kick things off, Billy, with race number one, which, of course, begins the 50-cent early pick five. We're on the main track. Fast and firm conditions day today. Six and a half furlongs of the distance. Uh, maiden optional claimers, fillies and mares, a field of seven. The original morning line favorite was number six, side by side from the Karen Headley barn at five to two. But the current betting choice at nine to five is a second time starter from brian coroner's bar number two collect my thoughts written by umberto Rispoli. give us your thoughts billy on race one yeah first of all um big fan of marcia nafee who owns side by side 100%. i want to wish her the best of luck does a lot for our sport uh she's a little red feather partner so um good luck marcia I, I went with the two collect my thoughts i did not think um she would be bet down to nine to five early here but i, I like horses that get bet first time out and don't necessarily run slow and have an excuse. She was off slow. She was bumped. She was wide. You know, had a rough trip. Second time out, they usually improve. Brian Corner knows what he's doing. Um, if you want a price, though, the one right now is 10 to 1. And this is um, second time for Mullins. Ran well at Turf Paradise. The form may not show it, but you know how good Mullins and Berrios has been at this meet. And I think that horse is dangerous, even from the rail. Number one, a little town sis. Billy's second choice is eligible, eligible for the ship and win bonus that both San Ida and Del Mar offers. And number two, collect my thoughts, Billy's top pick. He mentioned that the Philly got better in her debut. I also like, in addition to what he said, that when the rider who, ride, who rode the horse in the debut elects to ride back Comes as back. well, that certainly is a sign of positive intent as well. Very smart. Yeah. Billy, you're, Billy, you're very involved in the industry, and you mentioned Marsha Nafi and how much she does for the sport. And you sit on a lot of boards. There's two, they're too numerous to mention. You interact with a lot of different owners, not just within your partnership, but this is really a collective effort of everybody trying to make the best California racing can be without any sort of subsidy. Absolutely. I mean, whether it's the TOC or Karma or any other board out here, 
um, it's important that we stick together. And it is, it's a really small, tight knit community and we're all trying to do the same thing. And that is make California racing prosper. And the rest of the country, believe me, I talk to a lot of people when I'm in Kentucky or wherever, you know, Pimlico, and they understand how important Southern California is, whether it's the sales, whether it's how, you know, when we ship, I mean, the wagering and the wagering. Yeah, it's huge. So um, it's important. We stick together and, and do our best to make sure that you know, even in with all the the vet stuff and everything, we were at the forefront. Hundred percent. And so now that Hiss is involved, and and you know, it's all, it's like we don't even have to change. We we actually get to lessen our rules on some of that stuff because of Hissa, because we were so in front of everything. So credit to Belinda and Aiden and their staff here at first, and also the guys down at Del Mar, Josh and Tommy, and all those guys down there. And the vets. And the vets. We all got to stick together and make this thing work. We sure do, and it's an uphill battle, but I'm confident with the people we have in charge that we're doing the absolute best we can. People are a lot smarter than I am, Tommy. <laughs> Race number two begins the 50 cent early pick four. We're going one mile on the turf course, again for fillies and mares. The turf rails today are at 30 feet. This is a starter optional claiming race. Scratch the five, leaves us with a field of four. The revised morning line favorite now at four to five is number three, Slam Diego from the aforementioned Jeff Mullins, Hector Barrios uh, tandem. Yeah. Small field, big price, or? I think small field, small price. Yeah. Mullins has been looking for a spot for this horse for a while. I thought this horse kind of got into trouble last time when she ran. Um, Barrios is so good right now. So is Jeff. And in a small field like that, I will say, though, sometimes in a small field, crazy things happen. So you have to decide as a gambler here and as a player, do you single this horse or do you kind of go all? Because you're not gonna, using two of the horses doesn't really do anything here. Um, my second choice would have probably been Tear Garden. And with that filly out, um, I think Slam Diego will get the job done. You make a good point, Billy, that I want to follow up on, and that's talking about trainers and jockeys. Let's first talk about jockeys. How do you, as a partnership, decide which jockeys ride which horses? Is that primarily the trainer's decision? Do you have any input at all into that? Kind of what goes on behind the scenes? Uh, no, I think it's it depends on what kind of owner you are. And obviously, I'm out here a lot. You see me in the morning. so You don't I see know, me in the morning. But I don't you see, see me you in the afternoon. Well, yeah, you're sleeping. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you you get with the trainer you know what kind of style horses have. We're going to talk about Good Buju in a minute, and Ricky Gonzalez Ricky really gets along with her and knows her and works her in the mornings. And a lot of times, you know, the riders come out and, and they get a feel for the horse. And sometimes you'll be in a race and it just doesn't, doesn't feel right. The rider just doesn't fit that particular style. And there's certain riders that can ride any kind of horse. There's others that maybe can't. But we have a really nice colony out here. I'm very pleased at how these guys are performing. I mean, JJ and Raspoli and and uh, the, the Ricky and Free Sue just came out yes. here. And now I feel bad. I should name them all so I don't get in trouble. <laughs> Sounds uh, like the Academy you know, Awards. Barrios has been fantastic. Uh, and, and look, when Pratt's here and Dottori, that was it's a that, different colony. It was, it was it was nice though having that selection. Yes. So you again, it depends on what kind of owner you are. I sit with our trainers. We go over the horses. We say who can we get here? Who can we get here? A lot of times you don't get the guy you want, right? A lot of times you know, already taken, already taken or booked. So you, you you do your best you can to to fit a certain jockey to a certain horse. Now, Little Red Feather has some two year olds where you're looking for partners on. Before we talk about the availability of that, talk about the people in your on your in your staff that discover these two year olds that are at sale. We've talked about some of these people yeah. before. They're behind the scenes. They don't get a lot of credit, but we, I'd love for you to give them some credit. It, it's taken us a long time, but we found a guy named John Dowd who's amazing. I don't, I don't know if he's watching, but uh, John's been around the industry for years and years. He actually trained. Um, the Bobby Hurley horse song in a prayer yes back in yes. the day that was his claim to fame and John is just he's just such a class guy he goes around does his job does his business doesn't bother people but at the sales he's very valuable to Little Red Feather and he 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 found Elm Drive he uh Benedict Canyon who runs is his uh Rexford a lot of our two-year-olds that are and now three years horse man uh horses that are going to be running soon um, credit to John Dowd. He's done, he does a fantastic job and you need someone like that. And it's really, you need trust. And we just, we trust John. We have five two year olds. We have, actually we have more, we have seven two year olds, maybe more eight, but we have five that are available right now. You can go to our website. You can contact me, Billy at little We're always looking for new people to 
come into the game and, and there's nothing more exciting than having a two-year-old going into Del Mar, Tommy, you know that. And we have a lot of turf horses too. So we have to, we can avoid Baffert. <laughs> Hitting the pick six might be more exciting than a two-year-old. And that's exactly what we're going to try and do. Starting in race number three, the jackpot single ticket care over now up to $201,000. That amount plus whatever is wage today will be yours. If you're the only winning ticket, also take note tomorrow and Sunday, we'll have a special promotion. If the, if you're the only winning ticket in the rainbow pick six million dollars guaranteed, regardless of the pool size. And on Monday, Memorial Day when we have special holiday racing mandatory pad in the 20 cent rainbow pick six so big promotions all weekend long for the pick six players but first thing first here Billy we're going one mile of the main track for maiden special weights these are all three year olds we've got a field of five after the scratch of number one Estonian who will run on another card over the weekend morning line favorite likely going lower is number five Wooster from the Bob Baffert barn three to five on the morning line yeah. named after a city in Massachusetts I probably butchered, butchered the pronunciation I thought you but said it great I think it, I think I did Wooster. an okay job yeah 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 no this is the connections of the Preakness winner. Exactly National right. National treasure. Uh, go ahead. Coming back from Dubai on relatively short notice. That's yeah. a little bit of a concern I have, but it is Baffert. He doesn't lose these races. <laughs> uh, he puts Juan Hernandez on. I think you could just move on in this race, single him, and get your pick six there. Dazzle Me Silver I thought was interesting. Uh, really shot for the moon in the San Diego Derby. Uh, Keith DeSormo obviously knows what he's doing. Now he comes back in a maiden race, obviously a much easier spot. If he does get upset, I look for Dazzle Me Silver if you want to go too deep in here, but you probably don't need to. Uh, Baffert wants to get a win. You know, they, they went into the, the Bob Lewis after a second in the maiden race, so they obviously had high hopes for this horse, and he probably gets the job done today, Tommy. And you mentioned the connections of Juan Hernandez and Bob Baffert when they team up over the last two years, believe it or not. They went at a 33% win clip, incredibly a high stratospheric type of percentage when those two hook up. I believe so, it. Certainly they'll be dangerous. We've seen enough races where that would uh, basically <laughs> yeah. vet out, right? Absolutely. Race number four, Billy, is where you have your one runner on the card is number two, Good Buju, and we're traveling one mile on the turf course. Also, race four begins the 50 cent late pick five. This race is for Phillies and Mares. $32,000 claimers, non-winners of two races lifetime. You're the favorite. It's eight to five on the morning line. Before we get your thoughts on the race, as I was perusing the racing form, I saw that Good Buju's best buyer speed figure was two races back when she actually went a mile. That was back on April 1st. That was the ninth race. Let's watch that replay. She's actually going to be wearing saddlecloth number five. She'll be pressing the pace early, and for some strange reason, at least in my estimation the jockey wrangled her back we'll get your thoughts on that afterwards but let's listen to frank miramati describe the action back on april 1st the ninth race of good buju ran in they're in the gate they're off good buju in the center of the course is out quickly here's real fire now sprinting up and down on the inside bye bye bugsy is in the firing line too so it's bye bye bugsy and real fire dueling for the lead Good Buju is just behind them in third. Then it's We Miss Grammy between rivals taking the fourth spot, followed by an agent mistake who races just outside of Ghostum, and that pair six lengths off the lead. Glenall and Katarini are the next pair, followed by Slam Diego spanning the globe and another length and a half to Peppermint Flirt. Down the back stretch, and it's Bye Bye Bugsy showing the way by two lengths. Real Fire second, Good Buju at the rail third, followed by We Miss Grammy fourth, four lengths off the leader. Then comes Ghostum and an agent mistake together, Katarini and Glenall following them. Spanning the globe and the pink is 10 lengths off the lead. Outside of her comes Slam Diego and still two to Peppermint Flirt. It's Bye Bye Bugsy still in front. Real Fire getting closer within a half length in second. An agent mistake moving up. Good Buju biding her time down at the rail with the white and orange cap. They're at the top of the stretch. Several chances from behind now. An agent mistake is coming. Here's Glenall from out of nowhere. Good Buju finds room along the inside. Center of the course. Glenall is really coming fast. And an agent mistake. An agent mistake. Or Glenall. Glenall with the momentum. And Glenall runs him down. That's two for Frankie Detroit. Billy, we talked about the importance of a jockey knowing a runner and Ramon Vasquez rode Good Buju in the replay we just watched. That's the first time he had been on her, but Good Buju does have one career run, and look who rode that particular for that particular victory, none other than Ricky Gonzalez, who rides her today. You know, Ricky had uh, fallen off a horse right before that, 
uh, not that day, but maybe the day before. So unfortunately, he couldn't ride her that day. Ramon Vasquez is a hell of a rider. No he doubt. rides Elm Drive is very good. But he didn't know the horse, and you, you pointed it out while we were watching the replay. Once she broke good, put her on the lead and let her roll. And that's probably what's going to happen today. The rails are at 30 feet, which a lot of people don't talk about. But that favors speed when you're when the rails are out, especially that far. So I think Good Boo Juice probably makes the lead in here. And we're going to try to go wire to wire. She gets a little class relief, too. You have runners, Billy, with both Jeff Mullins and Phil D'Amato. Am I leaving any other, other trainers out here on the West Coast? We know you have Graham Motion and some other uh, trainers yeah, back east. Yeah, uh, we have a horse with Pete Erton out here. We've had a horse with Mike Pipey, obviously. Uh, Pipes and I go way back. He's a hell of a trainer. Um, I saw him win one the other day that was awesome for our good friend Sluggo. And uh, always root for those guys. So, But Phil... Uh, is our main trainer, and then Jeff has a bunch. And and Jeff is an absolutely amazing horseman. You've been around him. Uh, he really knows what he's doing. So does Phil, of course. But uh, I think this Philly's going to run good today. I'm old enough to remember when Jeff Mullins trained at Turf Paradise way back when nobody <laughs> yeah. knew who he was in Southern yeah. California. I like his beard, too. <laughs> did you see his beard? I, I did. He looks good. He looks like a, like a mountain man. He's a man's man. He really is. Race number five begins the 50 set late pick four. We're going one mile on the main track. Starter optional claiming types. One scratch. Scratch the six. Quick buck leaves us with a feel of seven. Number one, Clooney. Down on the rail is the five to two morning line favorite. The light bulb went off last time. Billy winning by, uh, by a neck uh, in a maiden optional claiming race. You think uh, we can see him back in the winner's circle today? I mean, of course you can. I mean, Juan Hernandez, John Sadler are good friends at Hronis, Hronis Racing. But I went with the four deservedly. Uh, always been high on this horse. In fact, Tom, we pin hooked this horse. Wow. So uh, for 200000 it says here in the form, um, to Mark Ladd and Red Baron, our good friend Tim Cohen. Uh, what did you buy, like you buy him for? Uh, oh, that's, that's a great question. I don't really maybe I should have looked that up. Maybe. Okay. Maybe that's, about 100. That's a good yeah, profit. we turned a good profit on Deservedly. It was a little disappointing to start off his career, but he's find, found himself now. He stretches out today. I remember Glad always said he thought he wanted to go long, gets his chance after two pretty good efforts. And if you look at the sheets, he, he paired up nines. A lot of times you move forward off of two pa up a pair up. So I look for him to move forward. DeSormo knows him well. And, and I like the three to one price, especially with, I, I think Clooney may get to be, uh, bet a little bit. You also give a little love to number eight, Tiz Talk. I actually watched a workout for Tiz Talk, who was working in company with a turf runner from the Sadler Barn by the name of, uh, uh, what's the name? Uh, it was by Accelerate. Workday. Workday. Workday was the name yep. of the workmate that Tiz Talk worked with. Just one effort since off the claim from the Doug O'Neill Barn, ran over in the Turf Paradise Derby. What is it about Tiz Talk that you like, Billy? We lost the shake that day. Okay. There uh, were for uh, 50. four claims in. Yeah, and he was really impressive that day. And look, they took a shot and sent him to the turf, you know, to uh, Turf Paradise, right? Or Turfway Park? Turf, turf Paradise. Park. Is that Turf Paradise? Yeah, turf yeah. Paradise. Um, and they took a shot, shipped him. He was a big favorite that day. You never know what happens when you go to Arizona. So now they bring him back, find him in the right Take spot. Their time. I, and I like the price. Uh, I like the morning line, five to one. I thought that could drift up. So I thought, let's get a little price there. And you mentioned Jackie Kent Sormo on your top selection, number four, deservedly. Quiet, bi quietly, Billy, he's had a very good start to this spring-summer meet. 36 times he's been on the back of a horse. He's hit the winner's circle eight times for a 22% win percentage. It's good to see Kent back riding at a high level because we all know, having ridden three Kentucky Derby winners, he's a Hall of Fame type of jock. Including Fusei Chepegas. Who just Chepegas passed away, just unfortunately. Passed away. Yes. Yeah. So, um, listen. Kent is an incredible athlete, probably the best athlete out here. Basketball player, he's, he, and, golfer. And, and he's a good guy. He just obviously has some personal stuff sure. that, that he needed to get over, but it is. It's super to have him back, and, and it just adds to the strength of our colony. Race number six, we're sprinting six furlongs in the turf course. This is a starter allowance race. Scratch the also eligible number nine, leaves us with a feel of eight, and number eight, Inch, who's a little bit camera shy from the aforementioned Jeff Mellon's Hector Barrio tandem, is the three, is the lukewarm, I should say, three to one more in line favorite. Looks like there's a lot of different ways you could go here, Billy. Which way are you going? Yeah, I struggled in this race. I think it's wide open. I ended up going with, uh, with Inch, uh, Barrios and Mullins again. God, Mullins can have a big day today. I didn't even realize when I was going through this how many times <laughs> I picked Mullins. Um, you're right. Camera shy, two for 21 lifetime. Pairs eights on the sheets, though. Um, he's always right there. He's getting older now, but uh, he, I think he found a field that, that he can handle in this spot. Uh, I thought Seismic Spirit who's run four bang-up races, uh, and, and he's by Bellardo. Do you know who else is by Bellardo? I do, do not. I do not. Gold Phoenix. There you go. Yeah, so I like Seismic Spirit just for that, and our good friend Nick Casado with his slam dunk Don't forget racing. Ryan Casado. And Ryan. Sorry, Ryan. <laughs> uh, and, they, they, you know, J.J. Hernandez knows this horse. She comes off a, uh, comes off a win. Uh, so I thought those were the two most logicals. If you're looking for kind of a – well, I guess it's only four to one. I kind of like Thunderheart a little bit. 
for Keith Craigmile, just because a lot of people don't know Keith Craigmile and he actually you know knows what he's doing. And this horse is pointing in the right direction. I call that kind of up arrow, even though he lost a cup, uh, a few of these uh, two back. That, maybe that's a horse. This is kind of a spread race to me, don't you see? I do. I yeah, do. I, I agree think it's with you. spread. I mean, who knows? Square Cat has numbers where he back, and that's our good friend Sam Siegel. Uh, we love Sam. I hope she runs well in here. And, and there, there's a bunch of horses that, if the trip works out, they can win this race. So I think I thought the six was a tough one, and we call that a separator. Eight five three one in no particular order in race number six. So says our summoner guest Billy Kudge. Billy, I want to circle back to our discussion in race five about Tiz Tuck when you talked about how you threw a claim in and you were one of yeah. four that lost the shake. What goes into deciding to claim a horse? And my second part of the question is: Do you use the sheets in order to evaluate a horse's ability? You've mentioned the sheets now a absolutely. few times. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. The third graph is a big part of what we do, and. We're trying to get into the mind of the trainer and owner that has the horse. Uh, work with a guy named Ben Posen, who's mm -hmm. an owner on his own right. He has Hopeless Stables and and Veranda Stables. So um, you'll see those names a lot with us. And work with the trainers. And just trying to identify a horse that may be improving or may and has conditions. You try, always try to look for a horse that, that has conditions. We like claiming maidens. It's maiden claiming because you have that starter allowance. Um, but you, you're trying to get a horse that can move up the ladder. We have a filly named Unfaithful, uh, Unfaithful Ways that runs on Monday. We just entered her this morning. She's running an allowance race, claimed her for 50. She reeled off three straight wins because she had those conditions. Broke her maiden, you know, won the starter. Won a, I think she – I don't know what else she won. Maybe a starter three. So um, – you, cl you claimed her off Richie Baltus, I believe. No, no, no. We had her with Richie Baltus. I got you. Okay. Yeah. But you claimed her off another trainer. Yes. You made a blinker move. Yeah, we put on what, blinker, what I stretched her out. She's sure. by Street Boss. We wanted to try her on the grass. They tried her once on the grass, and we took her that day thinking she would. So you got to look for something. You have to have a, a concept. Like, okay, we want to put blinkers on. We want to try her on the grass. We want to stretch her out. You can't just say, like, I'm going to claim this horse and just do the same thing. Like, you have to have kind of a plan to try to improve that horse. Now, it doesn't always work out. But we claimed a horse uh, two years ago at Del Mar that won for 20, and we ran back a month later for 25, won, got out the claim, and it was a, it was a good claim. It was a moneymaker, and that's what you try to do in the claiming ring. It's about turnover. Um, don't necessarily want to hold on too long. You want to put them in spots where they can win. Our people like to win. I like to win. You like to win, Tommy. <laughs> so when our horses are in, we, we want to win. We want to put them in spots where they can win. Speaking of winning, it's $1 golden hour pick four time in race number seven. That links our last two races here at Sanita with the last two races at Golden Gate. In race number seven, we kick things off in the golden hour pick four, sprinting five and a half furlongs in the main track for maiden special white calbred, fillies and mares. A good field of 10 here in the morning line. Favorite number four, sharp ride from the Dean Pedersen barn. Five to two on the morning line. Uh, John White's morning line, I should say. Sharp ride, a first time starter who's related to Thornhouse, who has obviously mm -hmm. turned into a tiger uh, for the Harris Farm as well. We talked about, about a lot of people. Nobody really more important in terms of historically to our industry than John Harris. Oh, Johnny, he's the man. He's a legend. Yes. Really, I don't even know what to say about John. I mean, he's been a blessing to California racing, and he loves it. It's good to see him out here when he can get out here. And Got a great restaurant and hotel uh, right I've been there. there. It's awesome. Many times. Yeah, it's Isn't great. It great? It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. And when you see those green and white silks, you so many memories. The of men's room. The men's room is filled with a winter yeah. circle pictures yeah. and you'll see sluggo is on this horse and sluggo also owns uh thornhouse a piece of yes. thornhouse so that's yes. interesting this horse must be talented has good works i actually went with the nine here tommy and um if you watch a replay if you want to watch a replay today watch this horse's last start there was so much trouble now he gets and he was bet down that day he gets outside this time around he's three to one he's got jj back on for mark Ladd, who wins plenty of races and uh, I think this horse is going to be tough from out there. Nine and four in race number seven. We close out the card in today's eighth race. Keep in mind, live racing resumes tomorrow. Tomorrow, our, our first post will be one o'clock, and we'll have nine races, then 10 races on Sunday and 10 races on Memorial Day Monday, all with a one o'clock first post. But first things first, race eight offers $5 golden hour daily double wagering. Similar concept, last race here with the last race at Golden Gate. We're back on the turf course, one mile the distance. Allowance optional claiming race, Calbred, Phillies and Mares, non-winners of one other than. A good field of eight. Number seven, Big Claire is the five to two morning line favorite. I'm perusing the ownership lines here, Billy. Yep. I see Nick Alexander. Uh, I see Terry Lovinger. They're all here. I mean, you talk about people. The whole seminar Redham. has been littered. Oh, yeah, Mr. Redham. This, this Rick, seminar has been Rich riddled Park. with people who love this sport. Absolutely. And we all want to keep that positive momentum going you know, the best we can. And it's kind of a, a unified effort to try and do that. 
And, you know, it's it's yeah. tough. It's it's not easy, and the game is not easy. I say it. I have a podcast. I think you've listened to it. The we owners, have to, yeah. We have to have, get you on the owner's box. Uh, it, it, this game is really hard. Yes. It's really hard. From though. an ownership standpoint, yeah. and handicappers don't really see this, the ups and downs you guys have to go through. It's a roller coaster. The unexpected. I mean, David Milch couldn't dream up some of the scenarios no. that happen in terms of, you know, uh, colic, foals being hit by lightning. Okay. I mean, it's just endless. No, really, it's, it, it's, it's I, tragic. I'm sorry to kind of laugh yeah, because it's, it's so true. It almost is comical. Correct. Um, we have a horse right now that we really like that that has a foot issue and we went to the mri and we did all the stuff and nothing showing anything we're like well but his foot hurts we know his foot please someone tell us what's wrong with him because he can't talk we want to take care of you <laughs> sure. uh it, it's it's listen that's it's, why you have to celebrate the victories absolutely because of and all it that doesn't matter and what hardship. level it is celebrate those victories yes. because they come too few and far between it's a really hard game um, we, we love the horses and care for the horses. We didn't really talk about aftercare a lot, but I do, you know, I work very on something karma very... and it's, it's, it's so important to have a plan for these horses when they're done with their career. And that's what we do here with karma in California. Uh, Lucinda Mandela does a great job making sure that these horses have a place to go. And as an owner, it's your responsibility. It really is to, to make sure when these horses are done with the racing, especially these geldings, uh, you know. Billy, let me yeah. stop you because during Del Mar, you have an annual handicapping yes. contest. It's sponsored by Little Red Feather Cares. Cares. Yep. That's an organization yep. that basically is a, an after racing Absolutely. type of a we placement. Started, yeah, we and started, it's, it's, a, it's for a great cause. It's really fun. It's, uh, it's, it's, I think it's the first weekend of the meet. We'll have an LRF Cares handicapping contest that goes to aftercare. We help out with our Little Red Feather horses. We also help out with Karma and other make other donations to other aftercare facilities. And then we have Karmathon on uh i believe it's august 26th this year which is a huge day yes. last year we raised three hundred thousand wow. dollars i got the chills um and and everybody out there and you you deal with a lot of horse players and it's it's interesting because i think more and more horse players are realizing how important this aftercare is they have to be taken care of you're betting on them you're playing them take care of them when they're done when when the uh, horses when the thoroughbreds disappear from the track i have countless friends ask me hey whatever happened to xyz yeah. horse and i'll ask the trainer and they say oh they found a good home out at love acres ranch or whatever the case yes. might be but they actually do care because suddenly they're no longer on the track and that's Absolutely. that's you know you just, you just you just don't own a horse during its racing career you own the horse for its lifetime 100 percent. couldn't have said it better myself having said that uh, billy we're, yeah. we're down to race number eight we're talking about nick alexander and richard barton and mr redham and terry lovinger yeah. any of those guys going to be seen in the winner's circle but, after know, race eight? I, I think of all the races today this is probably the most wide open and and i i thought to myself i've been a little chalky worcester and buju <laughs> and a lot of these horses so i went with a long shot here, and that's Medea. Medea. Yep, Medea. So Medea, uh, you get the seven pound weight advantage. This she ran against the probable favorite, Sunshine Babe. She got beat four and a half lengths last time, right? She goes, she goes to the inside today. A lot of times, I look at where they were positioned last time. She went from eight, the eight hole last time. She was wide to the one hole. She ran a, a, a decent sheet number. She ran a twelve last time. Where a lot of these horses are elevens, elevens, nine, ten, fourteen. So she's not that far back, and I like. The the 12 to 1 morning line, I felt I'd, I hadn't given the audience a price, and I wanted to try to hit him, bring him home with a big price. But I'd say sprint. Billy, it's been seven months since I last had you on the seminar. Believe it or not, seven months from today yeah. would be opening day at Sandy to December 26th. I hope to get you I'm back in. before then it. during the it. fall meet. <laughs> it's always a pleasure having always you on, Billy. Day, Thanks man. so much for your time and Thanks. insight. Continued success with all your runners and everything you do for the industry. I appreciate that. And, and good luck to all the Little Red Feather partners this weekend. We appreciate you watching the seminar as well. Next voice you hear will be track announcer Frank Miramati updating us with any late changes. Have fun, everybody, and good luck. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for our national anthem.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Santa Anita Park. The track is fast, the turf is firm, with the rail on the turf out 30 feet. Here are the changes. In the first, number seven, Princess Magic, one pound over. The first, of course, starts the early pick five. In the second, scratch five, Tiergarten, no show wagering. Odds maker John White has issued a revised morning line. In the third, start of the rainbow pick six, scratch number one, Austonian. Note that three, Dazzle Me Silver is two pounds over. The jackpot carryover, $201,000. In the fourth, there are no changes. In the fifth, scratch six, Quick Buck. Race five, take out the six. In the sixth, scratch the also eligible, number nine, Bodacious. Seven starts the golden hour pick four. Number 10 just is three pounds over. And the eight start of the golden hour double has a blinker note. Enjoy your day at the great race place. Big weekend of action and special racing on Monday as well. They'll be at the gate for the opener in 25 minutes at 1 p.m.